Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products by Nir El. Have you ever wondered why it is you can't go the morning without your iPhone? Or even just a few minutes? How about why you can't seem to start your day without a venti from Starbucks? These items have made their way into your daily routines, and now you have to have them or else your day just doesn't feel right. In Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products, Nir El tells us how companies use their knowledge of psychology to properly advertise their products to the public. And if you have your own business, then you'll definitely want to scoop up this knowledge in order to create a campaign that no one can resist and in turn maximize your profits. Key Points You can't always change old habits. New habits are hard to form. And that's because the old ones are hard to break. Our minds automatically go to our old habits because that is what worked previously. So why not do it again? The way to successfully adopt new habits is by doing it over and over again. Once you begin to repeat the same activity, it will become routine. Habit-forming products produce high revenues. A habit-forming product is one that makes its way into a consumer's daily routine, such as our iPhones, a laptop, or a watch. 79% of smartphone owners check their device within 15 minutes of waking up every morning. Near EL. Companies that sell habit-forming products usually have long-term customers. That's because these products are in their everyday lives. So they must do the upkeep to get a new one if it breaks or it's lost. Simply because they don't know how to function without it. These companies also get the benefit of word of mouth from their loyal customers who gush to their friends, family, and coworkers about their products. It's like free advertisement, so less money out and more customers in. Another perk of selling a habit-forming product is that it is hard to compete with. If consumers already love one product, it's hard to get them to switch, especially if it's a product that is in their daily routine. Companies can also choose to charge more with habit-forming products because they understand that people rely on them. The Four Stages Nier Eyal tells us that there are four stages of the hooked model. This model describes how consumers get addicted or hooked on a product. Number one, the trigger. Something external, such as an advertisement. Number two, the action. What is required from us is to use the habit-forming product. This could be downloading an app or signing up online. Number three, the reward. Fulfillment and happiness from the purchase. And number four, the investment. Whatever we've given for the product, such as money or time. These four stages are repeated over and over again, and with this repetition, they start to internalize and become habit. The trigger explained. The trigger is always external because it's not in the person's daily routine yet. This trigger could be an ad, but it could also be that another friend bought the product, so you just have to have it too. Users who continually find value in a product are more likely to tell their friends about it. Near EL A popular example of a trigger is when you get notifications from Facebook on your phone. Sure, you weren't on your phone to look at Facebook, but if it pops up, of course you're going to click on it. Internal triggers make us hooked. If we have a product we use in our everyday lives, it'll definitely start a long-term habit. Checking social media or taking Ubers are great examples of habit-forming products that turn on our internal cues. A lot of habit-forming products are ones that help with pain or give pleasure to consumers. That's because these are problems consumers want to solve, so they're actively looking for answers. All humans are motivated to seek pleasure and avoid pain, to seek hope and avoid fear, and finally, to seek social acceptance and avoid rejection. Near EL. That's why companies make a mental connection with their consumers, telling them that their product will solve their problems. When the customer feels positive after using the product, they will inevitably keep using it. Products need to motivate users. A trigger is no good without a call to action that will make the consumer buy the product. This means that it's important to make everything simple and easy for the consumer. For example, a registration that takes only one or two clicks compared to one that is pages long. A long registration could very well make a company lose a consumer because they simply didn't have the patience. Companies also play on emotional triggers. Animal rescue commercials playing Sarah McLachlan to get us to donate our paychecks is a classic example. But so are fast food chains that show that a double whopper will make us smile in satisfaction. 
Rewards create routine. The reward of purchasing a product is what keeps us from using it and motivates us to repurchase it. That's because we are getting pleasure from what we sacrifice to get it, sometimes our whole paycheck. But these habit-forming products only successfully make their way into a person's routine by keeping their promises, such as pain alleviation or pleasure. To create a true dependent relationship on a product, companies tend to use different rewards together. For example, in social media, you can interact with people in a number of different ways. Posts, DMs, likes, it's all so satisfying. Investment in Products In simple terms, the more money we spend on something, or the more time we invest, the greater we will see the value of that product. That's because we have given something up to have it. And because we see value in the purchase, we want to get our money's worth by adding the use of it into our daily routines. People will subconsciously make reasons for this high-value product to be present in their everyday lives, even if they could very well manage without it. Companies shouldn't go overboard. It's great for a company to have their consumers get hooked on a product, but there's a fine line between hooked and a total addiction. So it's important that companies use this hooked model responsibly. For example, if a company was to be somewhat destructive toward a person's health just to get them to keep using a product, that would be going way too far. If the product is essentially good and gives pleasure to people's lives, then there's no harm in taking advantage of the psychology of habit-forming products. Above all, know your customer. A company must know their audience. This is important for any business person when putting out advertisements. Proper knowledge of the targeted demographic is key to making big money. Companies must research their customers' needs and develop a product that correctly targets them. If companies want to revamp an older product or compete with a popular product, they must look to the habitual users for inspiration and see what would make them even happier. The main takeaway. By using their knowledge of psychology and how habits form, companies can successfully sell habit-forming products, create a dependent community of consumers, and gain big bucks in return. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!